You don't need a subscription, an app, or a smart TV to run karaoke. You just need Unraid. What if I told you that your Unraid server could also run your own private karaoke system, where your friends and family can cue songs from their own phones and you control everything locally? In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and set up Karaoke Eternal on Unraid so you can host your own karaoke nights without relying on cloud services or subscriptions. Whether this is for a party, a family night, or just because you love self-hosting fun projects, let's get it up and running. First thing we're going to need is a share for your karaoke files. You can create your own separate share, or if you'd like, you can put it in an existing share, which is the option that I'm going to do. If you want to create your own share, let me show you how to do that real quick. Over in Unraid, we're going to go to the Shares tab, go down to the bottom, we'll click Add Share. Here, we'll give it a name. Let's call it Karaoke. Comments, that's up to you. Just a brief description would be fine. Everything else is fine in defaults, so go ahead and hit Add Share. Once the share is created, if you want it to be accessible by Windows, you're going to scroll down a little bit. You'll find the SMB security settings here. And what we're looking for is this export option. We're going to drop down and select yes. This will make it so that Windows machines will be able to see the files. Hit apply and you're all set. Once those settings are applied, we're going to hit done. And you'll see your share is created over on the left side here. Like I said, I'm going to put mine in an existing share. So let me go back in here and delete this out. To do that, I'm going to click on karaoke. And down at the bottom, I'll click the delete option and hit delete. And you'll see it's been removed from the system. Now let's go create a subfolder in an existing share. If you want to set it up that way, let me show you how to do that. You open up File Explorer, drag that window over there for you. All right, here we are inside of my data share. In here, I'm going to go into my media folder and create a subfolder in there for the karaoke files. So right click, new folder, and I'll call it karaoke. At this point, you're going to move any of your existing karaoke files into this folder. All right, once you've got all your files copied over, you can go ahead and close that share out. And let's get on to installation. I'm going to go over to our Docker tab and we'll scroll all the way to the bottom. And in the bottom left, you'll find add container. Go ahead and click on that. The first field here, template. We're going to go ahead and leave that alone. Just leave it on select a template. We're going to go down to name. For name, we're going to call this karaoke eternal. So it'll be K-A-R-A-O-K-E dash eternal. And next down, we've got repository. For repository, I will leave all this information down in the description so you can go and grab that. But just so you know, it is red root LLC forward slash karaoke dash eternal. Just like that. Red root LLC forward slash karaoke dash eternal. This is the official Docker image for it. Now we're type bridge is fine. We'll leave that alone. So now at this point, we're going to need to set the paths that Karaoke Eternal will use. So to do that, down at the very bottom here, where it says add path, port, variable, label, or device, go ahead and click on that option. All right, config type, we'll leave that in path. Name, let's call this config. The container path will be forward slash config. And for the name up here, you'll notice I put a capital C. That's just proper case. It's a name. It's It doesn't need to be uppercase, lowercase. doesn't matter. And then for container path, that one all is in lowercase. All right, next down is host path. This field is going to be where the app data is going to go. So that is going to be slash MNT slash user slash app data slash. And then I'll put in the name of this container, which is karaoke dash eternal eternal. The default value, the access mode should be read, write description. All the rest there should be all good on defaults. If you want to put in a description, that's an optional field, so you're welcome to do that if you'd like. I'm just going to hit add and I'll move on. All right, now we need to add another path port variable label or device. So go ahead and click on that again. We'll leave it on path. For name, I'm going to call it this songs. This is where our media is going to be. Container path will be slash songs. And then host path, this will be the location where you'd set up your share. And on mine, that was in the data folder under media and then karaoke. So it'll be slash mnt slash user slash data slash media once again slash karaoke and i did an uppercase let me check that real quick there it looks like i did a lowercase so i need to go change that there we go we want it to match once again default value access mode should be read write description that's up to you again go ahead and hit add now let's go back down there and this time we're going to add a port let's go ahead and click on that again Config type will drop down and select port. The name, I'm going to call port. Container port, I am going to make that 8080. 
Host port, once again, should be 8080. The rest of the fields, the defaults are fine. Go ahead and hit add. All right, now, since we're setting the port to 8080, let's check and make sure that that's actually available. So down below, under show Docker allocations, we'll expand that. I'm gonna double click on that port number, hit control F on the keyboard for the find feature, and it shows four results. One, two, three, and, and it looks like one more with, well, I guess that's 1880. So we've got three results. There's one down here in use. It's not gonna work. I'm gonna drop this down by one and see if that's available. Let's just change this to 8079 and search for that. Doesn't look like it's in use at all. So I'll go back up to the port number and change this to 8079. Basically, you're just looking for a port that you've got available. Once you find one that's free, we'll move forward with that. So now let's go ahead and hide the Docker allocations just to clean things up. At this point, this is enough to get it working, but let's just make it a little bit nicer to use. Over in the top right, you'll find basic view. We're gonna to toggle that to advanced view. All right, for overview, I'm gonna paste in just the basic description of what karaoke is. It is optional, you don't need to do it, but it is kind of nice to have. Once again, I'll leave it down in the description if you just want to copy and paste. All right, scrolling down a little bit further, let's find icon URL. Once again, this will be down in the description. We'll use this location to set the icon for Karaoke Eternal. Paste that in. Next down, we've got web UI. To add the ability to drop down and select the web UI option in the Docker container list, we're going to put in the following information, which is going to be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash square bracket capital I, capital P, closing square bracket, colon, opening square bracket, and then port, colon, and your port number, followed by a closing bracket. If you change your port number, you'll need to make sure that that same port number is reflected here. All right, that should be good for what we need. Go ahead and scroll all the way down and hit apply. And while that's installing, why don't you come join us in Discord? The link is down in the description. All right, let's go ahead and hit done. Now you should see the Karaoke Eternal running in your list here of applications. And it does say it started. It's got a nice icon. Over on the right-hand side, let's go ahead and turn on Auto Start. Back over on the left, click on the icon, drop down, and now we've got this nice web UI. Go ahead and click on that. And here we are on the welcome page. So we need to fill out some basic information to get our initial account created. For the username or email, you enter just that, whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and do demo. Password, I'll make it my super secret password. Confirm that password. Display name, you can put in your name or whatever you'd like. Got the option for an avatar icon here. I'm just gonna leave it blank for now and click create account. And now you'll see right here in the middle, it says library empty, add media folders to get started. We're obviously gonna to need to add the location for our media folder so that Karaoke Eternal will find the files. There's two ways we can go about this. We can either click right here where it says add media folders or the other way, which I'm gonna show you because if you add one, this option is gone. So I'll show you where to add it if you wanna add one later on. Down in the bottom right, you'll find a smiley face icon. Go ahead and click on that. So before we add the media folders, let's talk about the stuff that we have in here. All right, first option is rooms. If you wanna create an additional room, you do that down below with create room. You can also click on the room itself to customize it. So let's go ahead and create room. Give it a name. Let's say you've got a place where you've got your setup at, like a family room. You have the option to put in a password for that room. I'm gonna leave it blank. Next option down is open or closed. That is if the room is open or closed. If it's open, people can queue songs into that room so they can play them there. And just so you know, any songs that are currently in the room, once you close it, they'll still be available until that queue is cleaned up. So I'll leave that room on open. Next down, we've got users. In here, you can allow new standard users or allow new guests. I'm gonna turn both on. Next down, we've got QR codes. This is kind of nice. If you show the QR code on the screen when it's playing, it has a QR code so people can just scan it with their phone and they can go create their own account or come in as a guest. Size options, opacity options, you can make it bigger, smaller, change the opacity, that kind of stuff. Once you're happy with it, go ahead and hit create room. And now you can see the family room has been created. You do have the option to delete rooms here. You can just click on the room itself, drop down and select remove room but I don't really see any need for that. You're gonna have at least one room, so I figured you can just go up here and just change the name, but the options are. All right, next down, users. This gives you the option to create new users. Click on it, same stuff, username or email, passwords, display names. They're a standard user or an administrator. Hit create user and you're good to go. All right, next option down is our media folder. Go ahead and expand that over on the right-hand side and you'll see the option there to add folder. 
when we were creating the container, we had set up a path for the songs to go into, and that was called slash songs, which you'll find right down here. That's where our media files are going to be located. Go ahead and click on that and then hit add folder. Now it should start scanning for those files if there's any in there, but if you add new ones later on, it doesn't automatically scan for that. If you want it to scan, you go over to the scan folder here, click on it, and it would manually scan it for you. As you can see at the top here, it's found 21 new and zero have been removed. Now, if we modify the current media folder, we've got the songs over on the right hand side. You've got this little eye icon. Go ahead and click on that. You can enable it to watch that folder automatically. Any changes you've made, go ahead and hit done. All right, scrolling down a little bit more, we've got player. If you open that one up, you've got the option to enable replay gain, which is clip safe. I would turn that on. Adjust the volume, kind of keeps everything at the same volume level. Scrolling down a little bit, we've got my account, which is the current account you're signed in with. You've got the option to change your username and the password, the display name, and the avatar icon. Then at the very bottom, it gives you some information about the system itself, which version you're on, GitHubs, you can get some stars, sponsor it, that kind of stuff. All right, so now let's go see if our karaoke library has shown up yet. To do that, over on the left-hand side, you'll find a little musical note in the bottom. Click on that. And there we go. You'll see some songs have shown up. I've got a very small library, so there's only a few in here. If you've got a huge library, then the search option in the top right is really nice. You just go up to there and type in, let's say, ZZ Top. You'll see it shows up. Filters it out. If you go through the search or if you just manually scroll up and down through the list, you find an artist that you'd like, you click on them, and it'll show you the songs that you have for that artist. So you've got one from ZZ Top, Matchbox 20. There are three in there. Adam Sandler's got two. Aaron Tippin's got one. So on and so forth. Let's clean this up a little bit. Go ahead and close up some of these folders here. And we'll leave the last one here. All right, so here, if you want to play a song, you queue it up, find the artist, find the song you want. You simply just click on it. You'll see it turns kind of a pinkish purple. That means it's been queued up. So once the user finds their song, they just tap on it. It's really simple to use. Now to actually go play the song, in the center at the bottom, you'll find the little play button. You'll click on that. Here, it'll show you the current queued up songs. This one here has already been played once. It's still here, but it's kind of dimmed out a little bit, meaning that it's been played. Next one down shows you the one that's currently queued up. If you've got several queued up here, if we go back here, we'll queue up a couple more. Let's do this one and that one and one more just random stuff now if we go back to the play option there you'll see that there's more stuff listed on this page you can manage songs as an administrator you've got a few different options here you can swipe from the right to the left and you'll see that it expands out a little bit and you got a couple things extra first one just like on these up here is a star it's your favorite option you click it it makes it a favorite real easy click it again it goes away Next option over is the information button. It gives you the song info, the song ID, how many MIDI files are contained within it. Just basic stuff. Next option here is moving it to the top of the queue. It's kind of nice. Let's say this person's got to leave close to the end of the night. They want to just get their song done and head out. You can just click that little option right there and it throws it right up to the top. So it's the next one in the queue. Let's say they said, never mind. I'm just going to leave. You can just get it out of there. Swipe over. Trash can removes it. All right, now to actually launch the player at the very top, you'll find no player in room, launch player. Go ahead and click on launch player. You'll see this big play button right here. You click play, it starts going. Go ahead and pause that. And then let me tell you some more about what's in here. Across the top, you've got the play option. You've got skip, so it just skips the song. Volume control, click on the little speaker, drag left and right, adjust the sound volume. Next to that, you've got some settings here. You can change the visualizer. Let's say this one back here is too busy. You can just cycle through and it gives you different options. Sensitivity, you can adjust sensitivity of the visualizer there. The size of the lyrics is below that. And the background itself, you can adjust all that stuff. Last option here is full screen mode. You hit it, it goes to full screen and away you go. Now this right here is the default room, room one. I didn't turn on the QR code. Let's go do that real quick. Close out of here. We'll go back to our little smiley face in the bottom find our room users will select allow new guests allow standard users qr code we'll enable that update room we'll go back to the player launch the player and now you'll see the qr code is down the bottom here the qr code is really nice users can join themselves they just come over there with their phone scan it then they can either come in as a returning user a new user or as a guest it'll bring up all the songs 
and they can just select what they want to play. And that's it. You now have Karaoke Eternal running on Unraid, giving you a fully self-hosted karaoke system that you control from start to finish. If this video helped you out, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more Unraid tutorials and fun self-hosted projects just like this. And if you want to support the channel directly, the best way to do that is by becoming a Patreon member. Patreon supporters get early access to videos, ad-free content, and help shape what I cover next. The link is in the description. Until then, check out one of these next, and I'll see you in the next one.